Hello everyone, uh, welcome to our presentation titled Evaluating Maritime Simulators using a Hybrid Multi-Criteria Decision-Making Approach. My name is Hassan Mahabub Tushar. I am a PhD Research Fellow at the Department of Maritime Operations uh, in University of Southeastern Norway. And with me in this work I have Associate Professor Ziaul Hakmunim and Professor Salman Nazir. First, I will briefly outline a little bit of background of this work and then start with goal of our study and then I'll briefly describe the methods we have used, the results we found and the implications of these results in different segments of the industry and also some future directions related to research. So two things we can all agree upon is that the future of maritime is highly automated and even in some segments is autonomous and the future of shipping is digital. So these digital and autonomous systems will continue to evolve and uh, will continue to spread over the entire maritime operational scenario. So that means the future seafarers should be ready for the change and they should be highly skilled on those techniques or tools being used in the day-to-day -day operations. So that sets a demand on the state-of-the-art training uh, of the seafarers. So therefore STCW has mandated some of the critical training components, especially in navigation training, that should be carried out in the simulators. Because the simulators are unique medium where seafarers can experience, see and reflect on their actions uh, in a safe environment without posing any harm or risk to them or the property. So it's naturally have become a cost-effective medium of training, especially in the maritime domain. So uh, now we see lots of different types of simulators evolving every day in the maritime training scenario and we uh, see different modalities of simulators for example nowadays we see full mission simulators um, taking up entire space of the room we see desktop based simulators and during pandemic during covid uh, we have seen the emerging cloud based simulators and virtual reality simulators are also coming into the discussion in the maritime training so there is a apparent uh, challenge with selecting which type of simulator we should use for what type of training. So that's a decision making problem nowadays in the maritime training institutes because there are a lot of factors involved and the cost of simulators and the regulatory compliance and, and if, if it's easy to train on those simulators. So we have the baseline is we have a lot of simulators and we um, evaluate them based on subjective criteria and sometimes objective criteria but that's a, that forms an overall uh, decision making problem of which simulator to use so that that's the reason uh, of this study we try to answer those questions and therefore the goal of this study is twofold what are the criteria that are taken into account while selecting simulators and we would rank the existing types of simulators based on those criteria. And we have adopted two methods. First one is Bayesian best source method to identify the criteria that affects the choice of simulators and rank those criteria. And on the second part we use preferential ranking organization method for enrichment evaluation promethe uh, to rank the simulators. So in the Bayesian best host method we followed stepwise approach and the first step we identify different criteria and sub-criteria that affect the simulator selection. And the second step we identify the most important and the least important criterion among all identified criteria. And on the third step we compare the most important criteria with the others and on the fourth we compare other criteria to the 
least important criteria. And on the fifth step, we estimate the overall weight of each individual criteria, which we will later use to rank the simulators in Prometheus. So on the first step of BBWM, uh, I will call Bayesian Best Source Method by this acronym from now. And uh, we did a data database search using these keywords and we ended up with 69 articles that deals with simulated training in maritime context. And we analyzed those articles and did a literature review and uh, interator reliability testing. And we ended up with 13 criteria. We, we made a survey. These are, the, these are our survey respondents from all over the world. And, and they had nautical instructors, engineering instructors, maritime researchers, and head of the departments of different maritime institutes. So they have all taken part in the uh, uh, in our survey. And moving on, we in the step three, as I mentioned before, uh, the survey respondents rated the most important criteria against other criteria in step three, and in step four, they rated on a scale of one to seven to compare other criteria to the least important criteria. And finally, we found these weights, local and global weights of each of the criterion. Here we ranked the criteria based on their global weight. And you can see the regulatory compliance comes as a top priority. And the lowest priority is the cost of simulators. Uh, here you see the second priority is pedagogic value. And third is ease of training. Fourth is fidelity. Fifth is the possibility of team training and so on. Then using the global weights of each criterion, we did a cradle ranking of the criteria in MATLAB software uh, using the method provided by Mohammadi and Razai in 2020. And here we can see that the instructional criteria ranks the highest while selecting a simulator. So that means uh, when we select a simulator for training, we think more about the instructional features it, it has more than the technical features and our organizational features. And in the sub criteria level ranking in the technical criteria, if we look deeper, we have five sub criteria within the technical criteria and here fidelity of simulators rank the highest and the possibility of remote training ranks the lowest. And under the instructional criteria, we have four sub criteria where we can see the pedagogic value ranks the highest and ease of assessment ranks the lowest. So when we select a simulator, we think more of pedagogic value or the pedagogic value it provides. And then if, and consequently, if it's easier to train and if there are available methods to train and available scenario to train. Uh, and in the, and in the organizational criteria level, we have the regulatory compliance as a top priority. That means when we select a simulator, we think more of if it's compliant with the existing regulations. And then we think about if our institute can afford it, the capacity of the institute is denoted by CAP here and then the cost of simulators if it's the procurement cost is higher then maybe we don't buy it and so on. Then uh, in the overall goal of this study here we identified 13 criteria and we have ranked those using best, uh, Bayesian best roast method and on the second part we will rank the simulators based on this criteria using Promethe. And we, uh, in this Promethe method, uh, we will use data from the best source method survey. So in that survey, we asked one question, considering each criteria, how suitable are the following types of simulators? And the experts rated those simulators on a scale of one to seven. And based on the results, of this question and the global weights 
that we have found previously of the 13 criteria. We used the Promethe software to rank those simulators and the software gives us these results. So I'm not going deeper into the calculation, but the left side provides a partial ranking and then the left, uh, right side provides the complete ranking. Consequently, uh, the complete ranking is the one we will adhere to now. So here we can see the full mission simulators are still the top priority, followed by virtual reality simulators, cloud-based simulators and desktop-based simulators. Now uh, we did a little bit more digging into the result and we see the ranking based on individual criterion if we see that. Based on criteria 1, fidelity, the ranking doesn't change. So if we put the whole weight to criteria 1, what would be the result? Uh, what would be the ranking or if the ranking changes? By looking into this picture we can analyze. But um, based on criteria 3, if the whole weight or the top priority of, uh, uh, of the institute was to train remotely, then the priority would change. For example, here the cloud-based simulators would be the top choice, followed by virtual reality, desktop, and full mission. And based on the cost of training, of course, desktop-based simulators are the cheaper options, followed by cloud-based, virtual reality, and full mission simulators. And in the Prometheus rainbow, if we look from left to right, we see the ranking, full mission, VR, cloud, and desktop. And on the top part, these are the beneficial criteria, and on the lower part, these are non-beneficial criteria. So, in terms of full mission simulator, we see that the beneficial criteria are more in number, and the regulatory compliance is the top, followed by pedagogic value and training efficiency. And if we look into the right desktop-based simulator, the top uh, criteria, beneficial criteria, are the cost of simulators, regulatory compliance, capacity of institutes, and ease of assessment. And it has a few other non-beneficial criteria. So the Prometheus Rainbow gives, gives us an overview of all the simulators and all the criteria which are beneficial and which are non-beneficial with regards to each of the simulators. So this is very important uh, for the decision makers or the instructors to make quick uh, or informed decisions at least while selecting maritime simulators. And this uh, study and our results have implications in three areas as we have identified in the paper. These are academic, industrial and policy implications. In academic, well, as we have mentioned, we now have greater insights into simulator features and we, we can make better decisions and we can make, uh, we can design the training scenarios considering identified criteria and which type of simulators we have. And we need more research uh, on the pedagogical methods, especially uh, on the use of new simulators, like virtual reality and cloud simulators are comparatively new than the traditional full mission or desktop based simulators. So, we need uh, new methods of training and more research into it, how to train on these new type of simulators to make the best out of it. And the instructional uh, implications we have is that since the manufacturers, simulator manufacturers actually hold the key to the features, with what type of features they want to put and how effectively. So to improve the instructional features of the simulators, uh, the, the manufacturers have to take responsibility and make more informed decisions based on research. And also they should accurately profile their products, uh, what they can offer and what cannot, so that it's, it's more easier for the users to select uh, simulators based on their needs. And the, the, the increasing the capabilities of low cost simulators is a main point, uh, is a crucial point because uh, not always the high cost or Highly expensive simulators are not always the best ones, as we have seen in the in our results. So the virtual reality simulators or cloud-based simulators are even better choices when we when we want to train our trainees remotely. 
So the manufacturers or industry should take note on that. And also the regulatory compliance of novel simulators should be uh, looked into whether the new types of simulators are uh, compliant with the existing regulation. And then we discuss two specific policy implications. One is that it would help the results of this study would help in balancing technical capabilities of simulators with regulations and it would it might help the, to democratize simulator training for all maritime institutes uh, in a sense that now we know lo what low-cost simulators are good for and then we can use those type of simulators based on our training needs and uh, there are a few areas of future work we have proposed one is the developing hybrid training models with multiple type of simulators for example now we can uh, we can model training scenarios where in a full mission simulator we can use VR for a specific type of activities. For example, if someone wants to look far uh, using binocular, VR can help. So I know different manufacturers are working on that solution. So we will see more of such hybrid solutions in the future. And now we have to validate new training and assessment methods for novel simulator types virtual reality and cloud-based simulator types are coming and we need to validate the training and assessment methods to get the best out of them and then uh, we can utilize the proposed mcdm framework that we have used uh, we can call it a hybrid framework so where we use best trust method we you and the promethe to rank the simulators and to identify criteria so we can use the same framework in other type of decision making problems in the maritime domain and we can also of course revisit revisit the same framework and analyze the changes in simulator training context at a later date to see if something has really changed in the perception of the experts and or the technological capabilities or instructional capabilities of the simulators so that's all from us and thank you for your patience and I welcome questions. Thank you.